Hi, and welcome to our next unit on acids and bases. Let's begin with a little bit of a historical perspective. Arrhenius defined acids as substances that produce hydrogen ions in water. So we can view it this way, perhaps. HCl aqueous will dissociate and break into ions, forming a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion. And these both aqueous as well. Arrhenius identified this species as the acid particle. Bases, on the other hand, produce hydroxide in water. So in his vision, something like sodium hydroxide, when dissolved in water, would produce sodium ions that are aqueous and the base particle, the hydroxide ion, which was also aqueous. So acids and bases relied on the presence of these two particles. And a neutralization reaction was simply a combination of these two ions to produce water. Now, this definition worked well, but as with all definitions that are this restrictive, we start to run into some problems. Here was an example of one. Ammonia gas and hydrogen chloride would mix together to make ammonium chloride solid. Now, both of these species, this one was identified as a base because of what it did with litmus, and HCl was defined as an acid because of what it did in water. Yet water isn't present in either of these cases, yet one behaved like an acid and one behaved like a base. So there was some problem with the concept of it having to be in water. Now, we can see why this one's an acid, because it has a hydrogen ion, but where's the OH ion in ammonia? So this reaction, although identified as neutralization, didn't involve the presence of these ions, and it didn't involve the presence of water. So we had to revisit the definition of an acid and a base, something that expanded to cover this situation. Bronsted and Lowry independently came up with a different concept. First off, acids are substances that donate protons. So if we take a look at this reaction that previous two was unexplained, what's happening is this hydrogen is being given to this substance. And not only does the hydrogen come over, but so does its positive charge. Hydrogen with a positive charge is essentially a proton. It's a hydrogen that's lost its electron. So we can see that this substance is donating a proton, and we define it as an acid. The substance that accepts the proton is referred to as the base. So that gives us our second definition. Now, we can also take a look at the reverse reaction. So going forward, we can see that the hydrogen is being donated this way, but because of what we learned about equilibrium, what about if we turn the reaction around and go in the other direction? Well, in order to proceed in the reverse direction, this hydrogen with its positive charge must be given to this substance. Since it accepts the proton, it's called the base, and this would be called the acid. This gives rise to something that are called acid-base pairs. This acid is the conjugate relative of this base. This forms what we call a conjugate acid-base pair, and they simply differ by an H plus ion. We also have a second conjugate acid-base pair, and that's these two here. Again, these two are related by an H plus ion. Let's look at a few more cases of, of reactions identifying the acid bases in them. So look at the reaction down below. In order to proceed in the forward direction, I can see that the hydrogen must have been given to the water molecule. And so the H plus came over, forming this hydronium ion. 
we'll learn a little bit more about that when we study pH. Anyway, this substance that accepted it is the base and this donating my acid. Going in the reverse direction, I can see that that hydrogen must be given to this ion. So in this case, the hydronium ion acts as the acid and the bicarbonate ion acts as the base. As far as my acid-base pairs go, this base and this acid are a pair because they differ by one hydrogen, one proton, and this acid and this base for my second pair. And we'll finish by taking a look at one final example. And going in the forward direction, I can see the water molecule has donated in this case, therefore acting as an acid. And this substance accepting a base. And going in my reverse direction, this substance donates this way. This accepting is the base. And this donating the acid. It's worth noting um, in this situation in these two reactions, I have water capable of donating a proton and I have water capable of accepting a proton. Substances that are capable of both donating and accepting are called amphoteric. The word amphi, we come across that before in other such words, amphibians, things that can live on land and water. So amphi gives us the idea of both. Protic protons. They can both accept and donate protons. So that serves as an introduction to the acid-base unit. From this point forward, we'll be primarily working with the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. And it's worth noting that there is even a further definition of acids and bases that one would take in higher level called the Lewis definition of acids and bases.